Okay. Hi everyone. Hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I've started this video probably 10 times now because I'm getting really distracted. And from the thumbnail, I'm sure you all know why. Um, we have a new member of our family. This is Harry. Come here, Harry. Come here. Hold on, be sweet. Be sweet. So this is Harry. He's our miniature schnauzer. This is not a Steve Donahue made me do it uh, influence type of deal. Although Steve Donahue loves um, dogs and, and is a huge fan of the canine species. Um, but yeah, um, it's, not, it's not a Steve Donahue made me do it moment. It is a moment which I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna focus y'all. I'm gonna, <laughs> it's so hard because Harry is so cute y'all. Okay. So here's the deal. He's being, oh my gosh, he's being so cute. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, for Halloween, we went to a good friend of mine's house and they recently got a Scotty, a, a puppy Scotty. And while we were there, my boys just fell in love. They played with the Scotty. They love the Scotty. And my husband and I had a conversation that night that we have been having an ongoing conversation about getting a dog. And we were like, yes, let's get a dog. So we tried to get a rescue that didn't really uh, go through because um, because they never got back to me. Then we saw on Craigslist that someone was trying to rehome a German Shepherd and that didn't work out either because they never got back to us. Then I checked yesterday and somebody was trying to give little Harry a home, which we named him Harry, they didn't name him Harry. Um, because he was the runt of the litter, the last one that they had, and they were trying to, to give him a good home. So I met Harry yesterday and I decided that he was mine. Well, ours, but mostly mine. And we decided to give little Harry a home and Harry's being very chew, very chewy. He's eight weeks old. He is the sweetest, most adorable, cutest little thing that ever did live and I am just so in love. Um, if you don't know who Steve Donahue is, Steve Donahue is a booktuber here on YouTube. He also is a huge fan of the canine species. He loves uh, his dogs. He loves dogs in general, probably more than he loves people. Um, but more importantly and more um, uh, akin to this video is that Steve Donahue is a huge reader. He's a book critic. He's been published everywhere. Kirkus Reviews, Christian Science Monitor. Um, actually, Steve, have you been published in the New York Times? I was going to say the Times, but I'm not really sure. I'm sure he has. Um, the moment I realized that Steve Donahue was the extraordinary human being that he is was when in his mid-year book freakout tag, he said that he had read 673 books, if my memory is correct, um, by July. Um, and that he was behind in his reading. 673 books. He has read every classic imaginable um, and he's just a, just a, a giant reader here on booktube. Um, if I thought I read a lot, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I've read nothing compared to the Donahue. Um, so recently I emailed him about um, where should I start with the tutors because I was really enjoying Wolf Hall and I wanted to get to know this time period a little bit better and he kindly, he kindly uh, did a, a tutor starter kit of both fiction and non-fiction um, and, and while during that video he also divulged my secret which is that I have some pretty profane la language that I use on Voxer apparently. This was news to me. <laughs> but Steve, how could you give away my secret? People think I'm nice. I want to keep it that way. Um, but yeah, so what happened was is that he made a, a starter kit in my honor. I'll link that video below. Oh, and I have another uh, guest. Come up here. Come on. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, and so he decided to give a starter kit, um, do a starter kit in my honor. So he named 10 books that I could get started with and, and you all, if you're interested in the tutors and you don't know where to start. You're going to have to give me a second. This is getting a little chaotic here. Give me a second. Things have, ooh, things have slowed down a, t a tiny bit. So, um, Steve Donahue created a starter kit, um, for, for me, as well as everybody else, of where to start if you want to start with reading the tutors. And on there, I was like, okay, so I have 10 books. 
that are, would be great starting places. And I was really interested in starting with King Henry VIII's wives. Um, I just thought it would be really interesting to read a couple of different authors who had their takes on the wives. And, um, and that's where I really started. So this is my fiction haul. I have a nonfiction haul coming up soon. Um, you know, it's just, it's, you know, I have no words. Buying books, I'm not going to feel bad. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Steve Donahue influence purchases, and then I'll move on to the non-Steve Donahue <laughs> influence purchases um, that are all adult fiction, and then I'll get to middle grade fiction. I know, middle grade fiction, and then children's books, okay? So uh, one of the books that he recommended was um, The Other Bowling Girl, which I've never read. And uh, I thought it would be pretty fun to, to read Philippa Gregory for the first time. Um, yeah, in his starter kit. Really, really ex excited about that. I also picked up The Sixth the Wife by Susanna Dunn, um, which uh, Steve Donahue describes Susanna, Susanna Dunn as an author who makes you care about the characters which I love, or I like the idea of, because I am a very character-driven reader. Um, we have Ford Maddox Ford, The Fifth Queen, which I believe Steve's words were the youngest and dumbest of Henry's wives. So we'll see. Um, I've never read Ford Maddox Ford, and I'm excited to get into his writing, um, just because I have never read it, and yet he's read, he's written books such as Paradise End, I believe, and um, is, you know, it, his name is out there. He's, he's got a reputation, so I thought I'd start with this. Um, I bought, because I'm reading Wolf Hall, I bought the second book in the series, which is Mantel's Bringing Up the Bodies. Don't go. Um, so, uh, which I've heard actually is better than her first book, Wolf Hall. Um, and I've heard that from patrons. When I worked at the library, this came out in that year, I believe. Uh, when I was working at the library and they the feedback was this was better than her first novel. Um, it's also shorter. Wow, all of the interruptions y'all. Okay, um, and that was it. So I bought those four books based on Steve Donahue's recommendations. Now books that are not, well, one of which is kind of Steve Donahue. I asked him about Margaret George. He said that she, or not Margaret George, Elizabeth George. He said that she was great. And then also a um, subscriber and somebody who I'm reading Wolf Hall with, Deborah Johnson, said that she's been loving um, Elizabeth George and Elizabeth George mysteries. I'm not much of a mystery reader, but I'm like, I can always become one, right? So this is her first book, Elizabeth George's first book um, in her series, and it's called A Great Deliverance. Um, yeah, again, got a, got a thumbs up from Steve. I'm like, <laughs> I'm managing a lot of things right now. Um, got a thumbs up from Steve and also, again, Deborah Johnson really liked this author. So I would love to, um, to, to really experience it. As far as I know, it's more of like a literary mystery. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited because I, again, I'm not much of a mystery reader and I would love to get into it. Um, okay. And then my final adult book, uh, I mean book written for adults. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Come here, right here. Oh, oh. Harry wants to play. Um, my final book, which is um, one that I've been wanting to read. I've seen it on Gina Standard's channel. I've, I'll link everyone I'm talking about below. I've seen it on Jean, Gina Standard Books is channel. I also know that this is one of Jack <clears throat> the Rambling Raconteur's favorite books and it's Possession, Possession by A.S. Byatt. I actually found this at my Goodwill for a dollar and it's in gorgeous condition. Um, and exactly the kind of book that I like to read in, in that it's um, a soft cover, uh, you know, a full size soft cover, which I just find they um, a very pleasurable experience. All right, the next three books are going to be middle grade. They're all my 1001 children's books you must read before you grow up. Um, and yeah, one of which I've already read, which is Natalie Babbitt's um, Tuck Everlasting, an extraordinary um, young adult-ish. I mean, you could, I think it's actually slated for like 11, 12 year olds, so middle grade um, romance. Uh, epic romance novel which is really good uh, reads like a fairy tale they made a movie of it which was also delightful 
Um, and I just, I really enjoyed this, so I wanted to have it. It's in gorgeous condition. Again, found it at my thrift store. Um, I bought this one from Thrift Books, and it is the, um, the Earth, the first book in the Earth Sea trilogy. It's on my 1001 children's books you must read before you grow up, and it's by Ur Ursula K. Le Guin. I haven't read any Le Guin, um, except for some of her nonfiction books. <laughs> Harry's just playing. Um, except for nonfiction books, her one nonfiction book on writing I have, uh, read through. And so I thought I would just start here with her books. Um, because it would, it's on my children's books list that I'm reading through. I also bought Out of the Dust by Karen Hess. This is, um, I'm actually surprised I haven't read it yet because it was very, very popular back when, um, when it was published. Again, getting distracted. One moment. Out of the Dust is a novel in verse. Um, uh, it's, I, I really don't know much about it, but it's a novel in verse and it had, it, it won all the accolades that it could possibly win when it came out. And I know it's still read today, even though it was published some time ago. Okay, the last four books are children's books. And they're all on my 1001 children's books that you must read before you grow up. Um, so yeah, excited. Except for thrift books really let me down. These children's books are really not in great condition. I think I selected good condition for everything. I'm going to have to go back and check. Um, but I think I selected good condition and most of them are, are just are, are like in meh shape. Um, so are we there yet? Um, by Alice and Lester. Um, and this is a journey around Australia. Actually, Michelle Lexi, um, if you're watching this and I'll link her channel below, she lives in Australia and I'm wondering, have you read this? Um, sometimes books, children's books are more popular in certain countries. And so actually I'm, I'm curious about that. Um, okay. The next one is you all, you're all my favorites, which is so cute because this is something my youngest brother would say. Um, with five older siblings, he would ask us, you know, we, no, we would ask him, who's your favorite? And he would be like, you're all my favorites. And I'm sure that he would still say that today. He'd be like, you're all, you're all my favorites. What are, you, what are you saying? Even though he's much older now, but you know, baby of the family and all that. Um, this one is I hate school. Actually, this would be perfect for my three-year-old right now because he is going through it about not wanting to go to school right now. It's been a whole thing. He cries. It's, 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 it's a deal. It's a deal. Isn't that right, Harry? It's a deal. So actually I should probably read that to him today cause he's going to school tomorrow and I would like him to go because it gives me some reading time without any littles around. All right, I had to take a pause. Things were getting a little hairy. So as I was saying, my little one doesn't like to go to school, but um, tomorrow, you know, I'm not gonna be home alone. I'm gonna have little Harry with me, um, who is just, I mean, just a delight. I'm really loving having a dog. It hasn't even been 24 hours, y'all, but I'm loving having a dog. Okay, um, my last book is The Boy Who Grew Flowers, um, and this is by Jen Watsowich. Um, I haven't heard of this. I really don't know anything about this except for it seems like it's a, a book about nature. Um, and so those were on my 1001 children's books that you must read before you grow up, which is a project that I'm doing. If you don't know anything about it, I'll link it down below. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I have my Steve Donahue <laughs> influence purchases. Thank you, Steve. Um, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Do you want to, should we do, should we try and do a Steve stack? Let's see if we can do a Steve stack. Okay. Boy Who Grew Flowers. I hate school. You're all my favorites. Are we there yet? Then we have, oh, um, Elizabeth George, A Great Deliverance. Mantel's Bringing Up the Bodies. Ford Maddox Ford, uh, The Fifth Queen. Susanna Dunn's The Sixth Wife. Philippa Gregory's The Other Boleyn Girl. Oh man. Okay, Out of the Dust, The Wizard of Sea Earth, Tuck Everlasting, and oh man, Possession. Okay, so that is my, that is my stack, um, and that is it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Steve, for, for making that tutors video uh, for me, as well as for everybody else to enjoy. I just greatly appreciate it. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading through all the books you suggested, but this is where I'm starting. And thank you all for watching and meeting Harry, who's just, a, just, I mean, 
amazing. I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled, y'all. Um, I cannot wait to, um, you know, to, to see him grow up and, and spend more time with him. Okay, that's it. I'm going to stop gushing. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.